Hi, Bill Kalina here. I'm the director at the Morris Arboretum and I wanted to update my spring weeds video and talk about, it's been about four weeks or so, talk about what's in bloom now in mid-spring. I'm not going to talk about dandelions. I think everybody knows what dandelions are and how to get rid of dandelions, but talk about some of the other, uh, some of the other weeds or things you might consider weeds that you might be dealing with in your garden or landscape in mid-spring. So weed I've been watching out for, and sure enough, here it comes up, is something called Penelia, Penelia ternata, which is sort of a new invasive species that's becoming a lot more widespread. It's spread around in nursery plants, and it's related to, if you know Jack in the Pulpit, other plants in the Airaceae. Um, kind of looks like that ternata means three leaflets, and it's a little early to see these, uh, the leaflets on here, but maybe I can show you a little bit when I dig a few up just to show you what it looks like underground. Now, you can see the tubers there. So what this does is every plant, that was probably one plant last year, and it does its thing. These leaves grow up and they have sort of three leaflets that look a lot like Jack in the Pulpit. Um, they also have these kind of Jack in the Pulpit like flowers. That one hasn't opened up yet. But uh, a little too early to see the leaves here. Might be able to find some somewhere else. But each one of these tubers will form half a dozen or more babies in the fall, and then uh, and they'll, they'll you know spread more and more and more, and you just quickly get overrun with these things. Um, and you know the best way would be to what I just did. Look at all those in there. To dig that out, and then hopefully you get them all. But uh, Something else that I found works fairly well, and I'll just I'll have to reposition the camera, so bear with me here. This is a sort of a old fangled, new fangled type of weeding hoe that I got from, from England Bulldog Tools. You can use a regular sort of weeding hoe too, but what I'm doing here is I'm just going chopping off all those stems like that. And now I haven't eliminated the tubers, but with a plant like this, if you, you can cut off a lot of those stems before that leaves have a chance to grow out, you really weaken the plant. So uh, if you can't, if you have such a big area where you can't manage all, all of them uh, manually by digging them out, you can try just coming through a few times during the season and, uh, and chopping away. The important thing is, Get them before they really get too far along. Some plants are very obvious at certain times of the year. One of those is the wild onion, Allium canadense. Because it is a, a winter species, it can grow in very cold weather, so it sprouts out of lawns and waste areas very early in the season and grows up. Uh, and, and flowers are uh, often doesn't flower a lot, but drops little bulbets on it. Uh, but those each bulb will then produce offsets, so the clump gets bigger and bigger every year. So pretty obvious plant in people's lawns, and uh, people that have uh, nice turf don't like it too much because when the grass is still brown, these are up in tufts of green all through, and so look a little strange. There's, they're actually two closely related species. Uh, we're looking at. The, uh, the wild onion, and then uh, Allium vineale is the wild garlic, which um, I'll put next to it. You can kind of see it's um, often a little bit taller plant. The, uh, the way you'll tell them apart, I'll just show you up close in just a second. Now the easy way to tell these apart is, is wild onion has this sort of, it's not a really a round leaf, it has a channeled leaf and it's solid pretty much. The leaf is solid, it's not hollow. Whereas while garlic has a round leaf, and if you break these open, 
they are hollow in the middle. They both have a sort of a you know garlicky onion smell and uh, they have bulbs on them too. You can see this bulb on here. Now wild edible people will uh, will use these to see they're pretty strong uh, compared with cultivated onions and garlic but you you can eat these. The, the main thing is you want to make sure you've got the right thing. You don't need something like the Star of Bethlehem or other look-alikes but uh, they do have that really noticeable garlicky onion smell which is the easy way to identify and the wild well, garlic with those hollow stems and the wild onion with more sort of a channeled uh, I, hollow leaves excuse me and the wild onion with more of a solid leaf a little bit hollow in the middle but not rounded like that next up in the pantheon of weeds is star of Bethlehem or Nothagalum. Uh, it's a, uh, unfortunately it's a kind of a cloudy day today so you can't see the flowers open but uh, this is a plant that often you'll see as a lawn weed. People used to buy this as an ornamental bulb. In fact it's still sold that way but trust me don't buy this, don't plant this because it really becomes quite a weed. But I'm going to dig one out so you can see what it looks like. Gotta try to dig one out. All right, so another bulb, and like many of these bulbs that become weeds, hopefully you can see as I'll zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, here, that it produces. All kinds of offset bulbs, and so one, one big one, then produces a whole bunch of babies. So, uh, like the panelia, like the wild garlic, difficult to get rid of because you have to keep digging these out. But if you have a few of those in your lawn, and you say, "What's that white, nice white flower?" When they open up. You can see they're green on the outside and then oh, white on the inside. Let me zoom in there. And uh, they open up like a star, um, but uh, pretty easily recognizable because of that green on the outside. That's ornithogollum. Well, a question that I've had fairly often is how do I tell the native wildflower? Celandine poppy, Stylophrum difilum, from the weedy European greater celandine. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I've got both of them here. So what you see in the frame is the native species. And now the sun isn't quite out, so you can't see how big those flowers are. But if I sort of cheat, the flowers on this plant are, when they're fully open in the sun, anywhere from, you know, an inch and a half to two and a half inches across the uh, greater celandine as I bring into the picture now has much smaller flowers hopefully you can see that and then the if I pinch one of the stems the other really obvious thing and this is a this is a really good trick I'll zoom in for you um, is that the native one has uh, a smooth stem and that the, the weedy, uh, the, the greater celandine has a sort of a furry stem. And that's both the flower stems and the petioles of the leaves. So an uh, easy way to tell when you're sort of weeding in the garden and you're not sure, you want to take out the weeds. Let's look for the ones that are nice and furry like that. Now the uh, stylophorum, even though it is a wildflower, um, can seed around quite abundantly uh, and so uh, if, you're, if you're sort of worried about controlling it as getting a little too rambunctious the thing to do is after it flowers to so just give it a haircut cut all those flowers off before the seeds uh, mature and drop later in the spring. You may recognize this plant uh, if not this is called garlic mustard and quite a pernicious weed really an invasive species uh, that can move into 
uh, woodland situations and really take over habitat. Uh, the good news with this plant is it's a biennial. That means it flowers the second year and then dies. And so if I look kind of underneath the plants here, you can see all those seedlings coming up. That means we let this go to the seed last year. But for these guys, if I get them now before they have any seed pods on them and just grab them down at the base and pull them out like that. See, I got the whole root and everything like that. Okay, so those will dry because there's no seed pods on there. I'm comfortable just pulling them out and leaving them there. If they already had some seed pods that were forming, I recommend bagging them, disposing them that way, burning them something. But since these aren't anywhere close to setting seed, they'll just dry in place. But that's the way to break the cycle with garlic mustard, is just to keep pulling it out every year before it goes to seed and eventually all that seed bank will be exhausted and you really won't have garlic mustard anymore. So, got a little more work to do here, so I'll get to it. There's a follow-up to the earlier video on weeds and also the one I did on mulches and the benefits of mulching. I wanted to show you a control area here in the garden where I didn't apply any of that leaf compost mulch I was showing you in the video. So this is the effect of no mulch and no getting in there and, and then weeding out the pernicious things that poke up through the mulch. Here right nearby, another area where I applied that couple inches of the of the mulch. I've also gone in, I gotta do it again, but going in and with a hoe taking out any weeds that might push their way through. Quite a difference.